good afternoon and yes thankful to continue sharing with you uh, today the topic of my session is for such a time as this for such a time as this allow me to just open in prayer Lord, we want to, to hamper ourselves before you that we may, we may hear from you. Uh, we dedicate this space uh, to you, uh, this time to you, that Lord, you may speak to our hearts. Um, we want to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, again, uh, for such a time as now. Who would have imagined or even begun to think that we would be in such a time? How could we even have prepared uh, or made way so that we may survive differently in the time and the season that we have found ourselves in? over the last over the last 12 months or even more who would have imagined or even described some of the things that we have seen experienced even had on the media um it's just been so different so uncertain all over the world in every sector including the church the reality is we have been in a disaster response situation that is sustained everywhere for everyone old and young students and professionals um, everywhere life has indeed dealt the unexpected as christians as health workers what should be our perspective and what should be our response at this time i want to assure you all things all things work together for good and even in this we can be able to say with confidence nothing will separate us from his love his will is pleasing and it's perfect we have and in 2021 it continues to be the reality being in the will of god and what is at hand is suitable and it's precise for each one of us to fulfill their purpose because god knew it god planned it and god has given it to us as an opportunity I have uh, recently been looking at the book of Isaiah, uh, the first six chapters, and they give the outline of something that is so wicked, uh, a nation, the nation of Judah, um, that is wicked and faithful, um, describes the city of Jerusalem and the unfaithful that is there. And then the judgment of God uh, reigns on Judah and Jerusalem. And then there's destruction. There's destruction of the vineyard of the Lord. And it's, it's awful. It's, there's war. There's, it's wicked. And Isaiah takes, talks about this and takes it all in. Um, and it almost like reflects what is happening in our world today. It really sounds like the things that he's seeing, the things that he's describing are the very things that are happening in our midst right now. Uh, what we are seeing in international news, what we are seeing in the social media, just the full display of the things that we have been through, the things that we are going through, the things that are yet to come. Then Isaiah changes tune and he goes on to inform us if we are willing and if we are obedient, we shall eat the good 
of the land. In that situation that he's describing, he says, if only we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. He goes on to say, the branch of the Lord is glorified. And then almost as a climax, we get to see Isaiah's vision of the Lord high and lifted up. And he says the train of his robe is filling the temple and the earth is full of his glory. And then he asks, who shall I send and who will go for us? At such a time as now, the glory of the Lord, the trail of his robe filling the temple. And in that instance, he says, who will go for me? Who can I send? If we are willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. I appreciate and I testify to what God is doing in us in us and in the nations for his glory at such a time as today you are well aware of his voice um, you are well aware of the need in your space and all this does not take the lord by surprise not at all in fact the lord has the remedy and the opportune work that he wants to do and is unveiling for us. The Lord has a message for his people that has been invested in us and he's seeking our participation. Isaiah was shown the need and before he was invited to participate, he was asked, being asked by the Lord, can you see it? Can you see the wickedness? Can you see what has come into the space that you are in? Will you, will you carry my glory into that? What is that the Lord is asking of you to be part of? For your own fulfillment. For him to bring out the purpose for which he created you for. For such a time as now. In the recent history, we have seen a suffering world, um, a world brought to its knees in, in many ways. And I'm reminded of a time in East Africa, in our, in our region, uh, in the 80s, where we went through a lasting disaster like we have seen this time. There was a huge famine uh, that swept in the region and several years uh, we saw it come and continue to be sustained. Uh, there was failed rain, there was lack of water, the region was dry and food was scarce, malnutrition was setting in, children were getting wasted, adults were succumbing and even livestock was succumbing. And I remember, I was young those days, just seeing a woman um, who was in, in a picture in the media, destitute, uh, so malnourished, um, in a situation that was so heartbreaking as she stood alone wearing almost what looked like rags and um, holding a baby, holding a baby in her hands who was who was wasted, you could count his ribs, uh, dry lips, and really looking miserable, um, almost like at the verge of succumbing. And that picture was so moving to the point that it's remained with me to this day. And in my spirit, I felt, no, I can't see this and, and hold back. Um, it was such a time as that that the Lord put a call of missions in my life. And it was that which has sustained and transformed me to transform the world. It's led me to go to the, to the mission field. As I went through medical school, as I went through the public health trainings that I did, I was preparing myself for such a time as I had seen portrayed in that picture 
that I could go and respond to the Lord. And indeed, more than 10 years later, after I saw that picture, as I made the decision for my family and I to step into the mission field, I had in mind that I will be used to rescue a life, that I will be used to make what was a wicked situation become better. Um, and it's, it's led to my fulfillment. It's led to the purpose of my life being accomplished. As I look back now, more than 25 years ago, since the time that I stepped into that, um, seeing what has been the fruit. What has been the fruit is more than 1 million people, never the same again, among the poor and the vulnerable, ministered by the ministry that I lead. In more than 12 countries in Africa, uh, the least of these being, being addressed because of that moment, that such a time as it was, that planted a seed in me. That hasn't been the only disaster. We, we've seen the AIDS uh, pandemic or epidemic come and go. Uh, we've seen the time of Ebola come and go. We've seen other global problems come. And uh, we, we are dealt with a situation and then the Lord asks us to respond. Asks us, what do you see? And do you see me lifted up? Do you see the trail of my robe filling the temple? It's such a time as now. And if we are willing and obedient, if we are willing and obedient, we partner with him and we get to see the best come out of us. At such a time as now, God is exceptionally at work in global and personal levels in ways that can only be supported by the pain and the changes and the opportunities that we are seeing in our world today. His will is being done and the dividends of the season are real and they will last. I pray that we will be among those that will seize the opportunity and allow transformation in our hearts that we may never be the same again. It's amazing what he is birthing now and what will be sustained by those who are willing and who are obedient. For such a time as this. Two things. What should be our perspective? And two, what should be our response? Let me talk about perspective first. Our identity is on the table. Our posture and attitude is defining us in reference to the need and what the Lord is allowing us to see. We are not health workers. We are Christian health workers. We are invited to be what only people who know Christ can be at such a time as now. We have on the table an opportunity to live out our faith and serve from our identity or allow ourselves to fall short of the one who is lifted up and the train of his robe fills the temple. The opportunity at such a time as now is gold. It's amazing that during a time like this, we are able to live and serve as children of a king, confident that even in this, it is working together for our good. The Lord is on the throne. The Lord is asking us to participate in the display of himself in such a situation as now. How will we be known? We will be known by our love because of his rich love. 
our faith and identity in him makes us stand tall. It does not put us to shame because we are under covenant. We are under covenant established between God and Noah and all the generations that have come and gone. And our hope is anchored in God. He will not destroy. He will not destroy because we are there and he's asking us to participate that there may be remedy, that there may be healing, and that this situation can again be for his glory. We can echo that hope in the midst of every situation as it unfolds. We can hold on to that hope in the night, in the hospital corridors, in our homes, at funerals. He will not destroy. We rise with courage. As fear and panic and anxiety rise around us, we can be different at such a time as now. The Lord who sends us is in need of us. And he has informed us really well of the task that he has displayed for us. We will not be dismayed. We will be strengthened. And when we begin to fear, we will reach out to his outstretched hand, which is victorious and which is familiar with service because he is a Lord of service. He took the towel and washed the disciples' feet. He's so familiar with service. When we feel scared and when we feel inadequate, we can hold on to him. Friends, God watches over us. Has he not assured us he is our refuge and our fortress and we can trust him? Surely he will save us from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover us with his feathers and under his wings we will find refuge. His faithfulness will be our shield. It will be our rampart. We can trust him. And even if he invites us into what is so difficult, even there he will be with us. For such a time as this, we cannot hold back. We cannot hesitate. We have to be witnesses and we have to step in with a perspective that is different from every other one that we could take a hold on other than the one that we are children of a king invited to participate at such a time as now. The Lord is depending on us to bring healing. We are the people God is going to use to show his glory in this pandemic and in the post pandemic world. His people who are called by his name humbling themselves and praying and seeking his face and turning from any wrongdoing and agreeing with him, being willing and obedient. This will cause him to hear from heaven and forgive and heal and bring a change at such a time as now. But he needs us. He needs us to be willing to be obedient, literally to lay down our lives that we can be used of him. That is the perspective he is asking of us. Realizing we are the aroma of Christ. To all who are affected directly or indirectly, to one we become a fragrance in death, to cross over well, to another we become a fragrance from death, to hold on to life, to hold on to the hope that we have known. Who is sufficient for these things? As his servants of sincerity, as commissioned of God in the sight of God, we speak in Christ because we are sufficient in him. We are his aroma in this pandemic. If we are willing and obedient 
not relying on our own our ability no not relying on even the skills that we have not at all indeed it could have well have happened this way that we no longer continue depending on ourselves but become reliant on a god who is all sufficient our deliverer will once again deliver through us and establish his glory in our time at such a time as now on him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as we serve him may i encourage you to know his love that abides to the end because nothing will separate us from from that love in all these things we will be more than conquerors through him who has loved us nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus that is the perspective that will keep us in serving and allowing him to be seen through us Secondly, our response for such a time as this, what should be our response? We are light in the darkness. We are soldiers at war. We are the hope for the hopeless. May we be a shining light to the nations may those who serve see his glory shine through us may we bring a word of hope to one and to all may we let his mercy flow through us in the wards in the nations in the places where he invites us to participate may we be the display of his glory and compromised righteousness in this season coming through us as we fulfill the role that he's inviting us to at such a time as now yes we will stand does it feel like war continuing war month after month well, here we are, and here we come, soldiers of Christ, marching with him, his banner over us, lifted, that we may be a procession of Christian health workers, that we may be a procession in the churches, that we may be a procession at such a time as now, numbered among the soldiers that are marching on for Christ. It's almost signing in and saying, till this is past, or I have passed, Lord, you can count on me. We will stand by his passion in us. We will stand by his zeal in us. As duty calls, we will not be found wanting. We sign in for such a time as now that the Lord may use us as soldiers in war let me encourage you that the end is just around the corner uh, when we went through that drought in the 1980s it felt like endless um, but I want you to know though the night may tarry joy comes in the morning the finish line is just ahead we will run and not be wary we will walk and not faint and though the night tarries we will we will hang in there we will hold on because our hope will be fulfilled in the morning soon we will look back we will look back over these years of the pandemic but until then until we are able to look back we have to fight we have to keep a good fight because for such a time as now is the lord counting on us 
that there may be hope in a hopeless world. That is what he's asking us to do. For such a time as now, for such a people as us, for such an opportunity as the one that he has allowed us to see, that his glory may fill the temple as we take our place. Lord, here we are, here we are in 2021. May your glory be revealed at such a time as now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.